Welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about an example of the marketplace of comics shaping the medium of comics. Now, those of you that have been collecting for a long time uh, have doubtlessly noticed that the length of a miniseries has shrunk. There used to be a thing called a maxi series. I don't even know if that language is still used at all, but you have a 12 issue series, uh, which make a nice chunky trade paperback that <clears throat> you can easily market later as a graphic novel because in truth it's, it's that length. Uh, then you have the, what used to be a standard six issue, uh, story arc turned to, into a trade paperback. Then it became five, which is what I see most commonly now, but I'm starting to see four issues collected. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, stories next year that are three issues, and they're, they're, they're a chunky three issues, but you can't keep reducing the scope of a thing without influencing the stories that are told uh, within those pages. I fear that perhaps we haven't caught up yet, story-wise, craft-wise. Let me explain. So when I was a kid... I read Amazing Spider-Man. I, I read uh, a lot of long-form, soap opera-esque, uh, seemingly endless uh, comic book stories. Now, when I was introduced to the British stuff, it blew my mind because uh, in addition to having a totally different creativity uh, taken from uh, a much different inspiration on average, uh, it was also brief. Uh, many of the stories were told in eight, eight, eight pages, uh, with some being four pages, and then uh, the, the single-page stories. Th this was completely alien to me, ran counter to my understanding of comics, and really expanded my, expanded my mind. Now, uh, I've tried over the years to occasionally uh, stretch that muscle and try to tell uh, short, effective short stories it is not easy and uh, is a skill all its own. Last night, I watched the movie The Revenant. I've seen it a few times at this point, but last night I watched it with no volume. You can follow everything going on in that movie. There is not an ounce of confusion. Uh, it is pure moment-to-moment -moment storytelling. Another movie that's highly effective at that moment-to-moment, -moment, almost footstep-by-footstep -footstep, uh, storytelling is Apocalypto. Pound for pound, this might be my favorite film of all time, and it's because it is so simple. Both The Revenant and Apocalypto follow men who are on short, relatively short journeys in terms of world distance. Uh, we're talking... Dozens of miles, maybe a hundred miles in, in The Revenant, not 10,000 miles, not a fantasy landscape that may be endless. It is, I have to get to this place that I physically can get to if things go my way. Here's all the struggles in front of me. I overcome them. I get to, in the case of The Revenant, revenge. In the case of Apocalypto, I save my family. Now, in comics, we, we very rarely, in American comics, do we see anything with the story as spare as those two films. And I think it's because it is a uh, writer-dominated uh, market, and therefore a writer-dominated medium at the moment. And the only place that writers feel not accurate, but the, the place that they feel they can show off is in dialogue. So you'll see these pages that are absolutely drowning in balloons, and you will very rarely see a page that puts full trust in the artist to uh, t tell using gesture uh, or, or um, a any other type of acting, uh, tell the story without dialogue. And I think that there is a real, 
I, there is a real pushback among readers and retailers to the mini. Increasingly, they are fed up with them. There's too many on, on the shelves, and so few of them feel rewarding in the way that people want from comics. Now, is some of that unfair? Some of that is certainly unfair because it, it's people who read Spider-Man uh, m- mad that you know the, the four-issue mini can't provide the same level of uh, l- life-spanning... <laughs> Um, uh, uh, narrative with gradual changes uh, a- and if done well that t- you know those long form stories are 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 beautiful things and part of what most of us think of as comics but practical market concerns and technology change art all the time the album format came from the amount of music that you could fit on a vinyl LP. That is all it has to do with. It became codified, and we think of it as as something that uh, just is, right? Yeah, albums have uh, 10, 10 tracks or so, you know, uh, uh, coming in at this length, X length, and it is it's completely, uh, it's not arbitrary, it's just not based on anything artistic. It's It's based on the very real, very practical matter of how much music can you fit on a piece of vinyl. So even if we lament the uh, slow death of the long form uh, extended run in comics in terms of story, we don't we don't have to be bad at the new job. We can we can accept that. There are always going to be changes, and these aren't radical changes, by the way, uh, or not as radical as they could be. I remember <clears throat> uh, reading, damn, I guess it must have been Understanding Comics, where, where it talks about the future of digital, where it talks about the idea of an endless page, um, and I hated that so much. Now all that's been, all that's come to bear in webtoon format, etc. But I hated the idea. I still do, to be frank with you. I think uh, American periodical comics are, in some respects, the actual the, the the actual apex of sequential storytelling. But <laughs> reality is not changing for either one of us, and if we want to tell stories, then we have to accept that we may not get the option on long. We have to recalibrate our brains to shorter form content and what is effective in that format, which is <clears throat> direct stories. Uh, it, th- this sounds so remedial for comics because this is how it should be, but just visually driven stories that are easy to follow, that have logical payoffs that do not uh, rely on the type of the type of uh, reveal that you only get from much longer pieces where you can develop a character over time uh, to a degree we're going to have to uh, not use finger paints but we occasionally might have to uh, we occasionally might have to use dynamite instead of chisels I'm worried that we will not keep pace with the market changes. And I'm worried that we will continue to try to tell the 50-issue, 30-character, five uh, uh, B-stories type of long-form narratives that we have stuck in our heads are comics while we are increasingly only having four issues space to do that. I think we're going to have to change the stories that we tell, and I do not think that that is a crime against humanity. 
I think it's a thing that we're going to have to adapt to and learn to do well. That's where my head is at. I still want to do a 50-issue series, but I want to tell stories. And the ones that the market is permitting at the moment are the ones that I'm going to focus on. That is all.